welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and an update on my latest gaming projects. So yeah, been a couple of weeks. Uh, cracky, where's that gone? Don't know where this year is going to. God, I sound even older than I am. Oh, I remember what it was like in the old days. Time goes by so quick. Oh, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, it's been a it's been a funny couple of weeks actually. I seem to have got an awful lot of done, but a lot of it's epic. Um, so apologies if that's not your thing. It's not entirely, not only epic, but um, it's been a lot of epic. One, it's funny people talk about this. Once you get into the flow of painting epic figures, or at least fifteen mil small scale figures, um, it kind of flows, and it's so much quicker and easier than 28 mil so you can rattle through units which in itself for me uh, somebody who wants to get them gaming um, is quite satisfying so anyway let's have a look at what i've been painting so first up uh, this is a, another battalion for my uh, spanish brigade that i talked about a couple of videos ago so um, adding a few battalions here and there just to sort of make up the numbers um, and i wanted to add a, a line but, uh, sorry, a light infantry battalion to the brigade. Um, now the um, it was 1812 onwards. The yeah, Spanish started to use um, British uniforms, um, and the light infantry had these sort of light blue uh, all over uh, uniforms, which is which is interesting as opposed to the line, which had the um, light blue jackets and grey trousers. Um, so I've done these. Uh, these are predominantly offensive miniatures, which I mentioned last time. I really, really like. They're fantastic. Um, I bought these in their Black Friday sale, um, and I made a bit of a cock up because when I was ordering them, I ordered all these light infantry because I wanted just light infantry, um, as opposed to they. They have different. Um, yeah, they look slightly different anyway. Um, and um, I made a cock up in that I didn't order any commands for them. So um, when I realised that, when I got them out to undercoat them, I luckily um, Gripping Beast were doing a 20% uh, a sale, I think, uh, for all the, pretty much all their range. So I went in with a few other figures that I needed and picked up um, the uh, guy with the flute, who was supposed to be a Spanish light infantry man. But he looks very much like a dismounted hussar. But anyway, um, he's he's joined this this battalion, um, and the officer beside him with the saber, which I really like, and then the generalissimo in front, uh, who I had to do in a very bombastic style. Um, so I picked those up as part of the uh, uh, so they're front rank figures, obviously, but they they fit in pretty well, and I'm never one for particularly worrying about you know unless they're absolutely obviously different scale. Um, that you know, figures from different manufacturers I like to put in because people were different scale, different sizes. So uh, the, obviously you've got the light company uh, with the green um, plume and the green epaulets and the grenadiers um, with the red, um, although they weren't called that, it was Tyrilliers and um, uh, Carbiniers, I think they had to the sort of French equivalent names. Um, and then the regular fusiliers have the white plumes. So um, I've done them on single bases, as you can see. Um, I've ordered from um, war bases a movement tray, which I can put them in all in, uh, so move them around much easier on the table. Um, but given the fact these are light infantry, they're more than likely going to go into a skirmish formation at some point. So having them as singles made perfect sense. And also. I can also use them for um, sharp practice games if I wish. So that is them done. So back to, well, sort of epic scale. Um, I won't spend too much time on these because if you're interested in epic, you may have seen the video I did about uh, how Essex figures fit in with uh, the new epic Warlord figures. Um, these are predominantly um, uh, Eng uh, so Essex figures from their uh, Renaissance range, um, their Carassias. Because Warlord's Epic Sprue only has two Carassias on it, and as I mentioned in the video before, in 30 Year War there are a lot more Carassias involved. Um, so I wanted to see what would mix in, and also I wanted some other, as I mentioned in the last video, some Cossacks and various other things that uh, Warlords currently don't do. Um, so this is uh, predominantly Epic, uh, sorry, predominantly Essex. There's an Epic Man there, uh, there's another one there, there's another one there. 
there's another one in front so there's four of them in there just to show that they do fit in scale wise with these quite old 15 mil figures from Essex um, which you know are, are just typical early uh, 15 mil figures uh, come out pretty well although I definitely do need to do something about this guy in the front the edging I tried to do hasn't worked quite as I like so he may just go back to his black armor and leave it at that anyway that's them done and then next up uh, this is a unit of well so a couple of units of um, musketeers who will be, dra be dragoons in the uh, in the game in epic pike and shot um, they again are the plastic um, from warlord although there is one metal in there um, I'll let you guess which one it is um, but uh, I've been trying out how steel fist compare um, and um, spoiler alert they compare very nicely in fact I will tell you it's this guy on the end I was only filling time because I didn't know <laughs> which one it was myself fits in really beautifully scale wise um, also the uh, it's a light cannon you get several of those on the various sprues uh, that I've painted up as well for these will be in the Imperial Force I think um, and largely that force was um, a ragtag uh, mercenary thing so there's no uniformity um, in the in their sort of uniforms they didn't really have uniforms but there's no uniformity um, and that's the sort of look I've gone for here so that's that done so I wouldn't want you to think that it's all epic round here um, no 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 still 28 mil is king um, this is a unit of six um, Nassau volunteer skirmish troops. These are from Perry's. Um, I painted them up as doubles because I'll probably use them in um, General Darme, but you know they can be used for skirmish troops in anything really. Um, nice little figures. I've got a set of these already, um, which are single based. But um, I picked up some more when I was doing another order and because uh, I like them so much. And they paint up pretty well. I've gone a bit more sort of, um, I don't know what you'd describe it, sort of uh, bold highlighting, should we say, with a green. Which, under strong light, I'm not sure I like. But when I see it on proper table, so I actually quite like as a style. So I may persist with that. Anyway, another uh, six skirmishers done. So as I was working my way through some of the pile of opportunity around here in the boot room, I came across these. Um, so I put them together on a base um, and sort of stuck them down and then just painted them up quickly with a bit of basic colours and dry brushes and what have you and then some of the Vallejo mud on there to provide a sort of uh, emplacement for a 28mm artillery. Um, just one of those little fun things. Just, uh, again, just variety keeps you... Keeps you it keeps my juices going, keeps me uh, motivated to keep painting different things. Um, so that's them, done. So next up, a load of Dragoons. These are epic um, scale English Civil War Dragoons. Um, they're a mixed bag, actually. You would have seen, if I, if you're interested in epic and scale comparisons with other 15mm manufacturers, all the dismounted troops are 15mm steel fist English Civil War musketeers. Uh, in fact, Dragoons, um, and I wanted to see how they compare with Epic. Um, they compare very favor favorably, put your teeth back in, Dom. Um, so you can see the, the mounted guys are all the plastics from Epics, um, from the Warlord stuff. So you got uh, they, you can see the f they fit pretty well together. You've got the mounted versions and the dismounted versions. So i um, quite pleased with how these came out. And uh, they, the good thing about these is they can join pretty much either side. Um, which is the beauty of this period. Um, you can see some of the uh, Dragoon, uh, when you look at them front on, yeah, they're not the best, a bit like all the cavalry of the epic scale. Uh, they're not the best, but uh, they'll do the job um, and it paints up incredibly easily. Again, talking about Steel Fist uh, miniatures, uh, these are um, a group of Steel Fist Carassias. I've painted them up as Imperial uh, troops. Uh, with the red sash. Um, generally the Imperial forces had red, the Protestants or certainly the Swedish had blue sashes and that's one of the only ways you can really tell the difference between the troops particularly because uh, they had so many mercenary troops within their forces. Um, also as I mentioned before the uh, Imperials had a lot more cuirassiers than, than uh, 
than the Protestant forces. Um, so um, I'm, I'm working through quite a lot of them for the Imperial forces. Um, now these I've painted um, three different ways actually, um, or three different colours. So the 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 because I wanted to get a bit of variety in the armour on these troops. Some of them I painted with um, sort of uh, a, a straight steel colour. One um, some were done with a dark steel colour, and some were done with I think it's called plate mail. Uh, from Army Painter, which is a much shinier, bright, almost silver steel, and then had a dark wash push put over them, and that gives you a little bit of variation in the different colours of armour, which I, I quite like, um, and I'll continue to do that, particularly with these sort of more heavily armoured troops. Um, so there you go, some more um, English, well, I was going to say English of War, they're not. 30 Year War, uh, epic scale, or in this case, properly 15 mil scale um, cavalry. And next up, a lone cannon. Um, again, just one of the epic Warlord plastics, um, cut off the sprue and just painted up. Dead simps to do. Unlike one I did before where I had a bit of problems with the barrel, this one not so much. It was actually pretty good, so I was quite pleased with how it came out. Um, and um, yeah, there's going to be a few. I think you basically with the epic sprues you get uh, medium sakers and light uh, cannons. So um, that'll do for most of them, but I might just invest in a few heavier cannons, um, probably from Steel Fist, because they should fit in nicely within the forces. Um, but uh, that'll be for the future. So next up, this is um, my first Swedish infantry uh, battalion, or battalia. Um, they are, again, the epic plastics. Now, I, I actually quite like these. I know the musketeers are a bit... Um, uniform shall we say they're all well they're all a bit uniform if I'm honest um, but the musculars particularly didn't really stand shoulder to shoulder like they've got them here like they're in Napoleonic formation um, oh just seen how much there's a whole load of, of basic material on the back of that one let me just rub that off nothing to see here um, it's one of the fun things with these they're quite fiddly to get in to put the basing on it's still there I'm gonna have to get a paintbrush on that um, anyway um, by the by, this is a Swedish formation. It is um, the Red uh, Red Regiment. Um, I tried to be a bit subtle, maybe too subtle, and next time I'll learn from it. Um, you can see that most of them are predominantly a sort of reddy colour, but when you've dulled them down, they don't look quite so bright. They look more like a brownie red, um, which is probably in keeping with how they would have been on the campaign trail. Um, but I'd like them to stand up a little bit more and be obviously from the Red Regiment, apart from the standards. But uh, I'll learn that for next time. Um, but um, nice to get one of the Swedes done. I'm, uh, so I'm planning to do both sides of these forces so I can play solo here in the cabin. Um, but also if anybody wants to play down the club, I can uh, take along both forces unless they happen to have... Uh, been epicing them their own forces. Um, the, the basing bit is a pain in the bum actually I have to say once you've got them all lined up trying to get in between them with glue and basing material um, is rather awkward um, so I haven't found a way that's satisfactory. I did start by sort of doing half and then sticking the other half in but you still got to get a paintbrush or something with glue down the middle of the line which um, is not easy. Anyway, that is that. That's another regiment done. So here we go, some more um, epic-ish scale 30-year um, war troops. So closest to the camera as it comes around here are some Essex 15mm um, Border Reaver cavalry. Now within the army list you can do a uh, British force which includes uh, border troops, which I thought would be fun to do as a sort of alternative force. So when I was buying the Essex figures to compare them to um, Epic, I put, picked these Reavers up. Now, they are definitely some of the bigger figures from Essex. Um, you can see the scale difference is quite a bit more noticeable with these um, other troops. Um, but um, yeah, they'll do fine. They'll do absolutely fine. So they're done. The other troop is a mixture of um, Essex. Sorry. The other troop is a mixture of, uh, actually I was going to say it's a mixture of Epic and Steel Fist, but it's not. They're all Steel Fist um, Carassias again. 
Um, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of crashes in the uh, Imperial Forces, so I've been working my way through. So this, this is another load of Steel Fist miniatures. Again, same process with the armour on these, mixed bag of three different types of steel or plate mail paint with a wash over them. And uh, I really like them. I think that they are really good figures. I might just buy more Steel Fist and be done with the Epics, because the Epics are a little bit basic, particularly face on, but um, hey ho. So that's them, none. And then finally for now, for epic stuff at least, this is um, another unit of um, heavy cavalry. This is the more normal harquebust um, heavy cavalry that um, fitted out the bulk of most of the forces because Karassias were obviously quite expensive to equip, whereas guys with just sort of uh, leather coats and what have you and swords was a lot easier to do. So. Again, I've done these as Imperial. They're a mixture of Steel Fist and Epic uh, plastics, and you can see how well they all go together. Um, these will be part of the Imperial forces. Um, for the Swedes, I'll do predominantly these sort of heavy cavalry rather than crashes, because uh, apparently in the uh, 30 Year War, the Swedes struggled to get hold of armor, um, so didn't tend to have so many crashes within their forces. So. Uh, but did certainly have a lot of heavy cavalry, so um, that's the way I'll go with these. So really pleased with how these came out. They're so quick and easy to paint, these epic scale figures of small 15 mils, and they come out pretty well, I think, so very happy. And so finally for now, um, this is definitely not epic. Uh, this is a 28 mil um, hos fortified hospital, um, which was a 3D print drink, um, model that was uh, available with the last um, Baron Wars Kickstarter that Footsaw did. Um, the figures with it aren't Footsaw, these are uh, metal figures I did a while back. Uh, but these are, um, the, the buildings and the walls and everything are all 3D prints. Um, when I bought into it I wanted to get this castle because I just thought it looked really really good. Now I have to say, whoops, sorry bashing the box that this is standing on, I enjoyed the effect of it. I think it's been really good. I did struggle with assembling it. Now you can say, well, how could that be, Dom? It's quite easy. But there's zero instructions. Um, and even things like which way round the walls go and um, where the gates go. Um, I'll give you a secret here. I put the gates around um, the wrong way. They should be actually be on the inside of those walls. In fact, yeah, it should be around the other way. So this wall should be facing this way. Um, and um, therefore the doors would be sort of set back uh, but I stuck them on and I used super glue and um, with a, they, they will actually open but uh, they're, <laughs> they're opening outwards rather than inwards um, which is a bit frustrating and I should have realized it but say so there was no simple instruction same with um, I think it was this building here um, it wasn't very obvious which way round things went um, and um, when you're dealing with 3D printing, you know, and super glue particularly, which you need to use, well, I needed to use, um, it became a little bit of a so and so if you got it wrong to try and reassemble. Um, and then it doesn't help that I dropped one of them on the floor and it smashed, so I had to re <laughs> repair it. So um, I'll let you decide which one that one was as we go around. So, but really happy. I've mounted it on a 40 by 40 MDF uh, bit of hardboard that I found. Um, and uh, basically just sort of glued it all down. I did think about using it as a separate building. You know, I could take all the elements are, but I've actually got quite a lot of bits and bobs. I don't think I really need it, so I thought I'd rather than risk it being damaged because it is quite fragile, um, I would um, I thought I'd just stick it down so it's permanently attached. So you can see you've got an inner courtyard with some steps and what have you. Um, the round tower here. This is the presumably the church. Now, what was really cool with this one is that um, you can change sides if you wish, <laughs> which I quite like. Um, I, you can see, obviously, I haven't uh, worked out a way to stick that. I imagine it originally it probably should have gone up and underneath to stick permanently there, but I, because I didn't want to make it permanently one side or the other, I've just sort of put it on top like that. Um, yeah, it was this building that dropped you can see the cracks all over the top here um yeah that was not great 
So, but I, I'm quite happy with how it's come out, really. Um, so I had a little bit of a fiddle with some of it. I think it's a really cool model, to be honest. Um, and, you know, I painted it very simply. Um, it was done with, um, uh, well, the, the bits of the uh, regular wall um, were done in the same way. So I undercoated, spray coated it all black um, and then uh, used a, well, sort of a, a, sort of a zenith, zenith highlight with white uh, over it. Um, and then I used something I haven't used for years. I use Army Painter Dip. Um, to sort of coat all over because I like the sort of brownie effect you get with that which I wanted to have these walls to feel like it was in the desert or in at least a very shade, a very sandy environment so um, you know I wanted them to be sandstone rather than bright black and grey or anything like that so uh, that's why I did it um, and I'm quite pleased to say uh, these two buildings I did arm and R, but you can see they've actually got sort of um, plaster or they're made to look like they've got plaster on over the top. So I thought, well, they most buildings in this this part of the world tended to be quite bright. So and red was always an important colour. So I'd go red and white. Um, I've weathered it a bit. You can see around here just um, with a bit of dry brushing. That's obviously what I did at the end. A whole load of dry brushing over it um, and a bit of localised darker washing um, just to sort of bring the uh, bring the finer points out. The other slight issue with it is, for me anyway, is that you can't actually open it up. Well, I suppose cleverer models, modelers could have done, um, you, because there aren't any inner floors. Um, so the only floors are here and on the, the base, basically. So um, you can't sort of open it up, which is a bit of a shame, really, because um, that would have been nice, particularly to be able to skirmish through it if you could have lifted the sections out. Um, and I guess cleverer model modelers than me could find a way of doing that but um, yeah so I'm not one of those but yeah very pleased with how it came out I think it's uh, quite effective don't know how much it's going to be used but I just thought it was a beautiful model and I really wanted to uh, to do it um, and try and do it make it uh, you know do it, do it proud sort of thing um, yeah really happy with that so there you go that's what I've been painting recently so there you go, um, has been a fair bit of uh, epic, as you can see, going on, but that castle was a bit of uh, bit of fun, quite enjoyed doing that. Um, I'm not the best model, as I've said many times, and now I look at it, there's a few gaps in, in the walls, but it's gone together pretty well, and I quite like the effect, and, and if I'm honest, I'm not sure how many times it's going to see the table, um, but it's a, it's a fun feature that um, I'll try and incorporate in games, relevant games in the future. I mean, I guess it could be used with the new 0200 um, uh, desert um, system coming out. That might work. Um, an old castle that uh, SAS are using as a base, or Germans are using. Anyway, whatever. Um, by the by, so what gaming-wise has been going on? Well, um, I think I said last in my last update um, that I was planning to do some uh, Chain of Command games. Um, which I'm sort of looking forward to and sort of not. Um, as I explained then, I've had some not great experiences with uh, Chain of Command, but I want to persist because I know it's a lardy rule set and lots of people enjoy it, and I just want to give it a fair crack of the whip, which I don't think I've had the chance to do so far. However, this the, the game never actually happened. Uh, we had a bit of a, a scheduling um, problem, um, and therefore it didn't actually happen. So Jonathan and I played um, a game of um, sharp practice Napoleonics. Um, I think it was, it's it's. I'll put a link here because it should be uh, up on the channel by now. Um, it was uh, a small scale game. Um, we played one of the scenarios. We just randomly diced um, um, from one of the scenarios in the book, um, which meant Jonathan had to. And I'd set up the table before he got there, before we knew what the scenario was before we even knew who was on the table and who was not, um, which I think is a good way of just making it fair. It's just, it was just a fairly standard deployment with a village in the middle. Um, and um, uh, as it turned out, he had to, I would, my, as it turned out, the objective was he had to get from one end of the table down a six foot table to the other end um, and capture my deployment point, which I could put anywhere down in my, final quarter of the table so of course I put it right on the baseline um, and then I had 
a, a mobile uh, sort of an alternate deployment point right in the center of the table um, and it was quite tactically interesting because uh, we got support points uh, he spent his on extra unit cavalry which of course were cuirassiers because that's a John O for you he loves his cuirassiers um, and um, I think it's the first time I've seen Jono be really aggressive in a game. Well, for, not first time, but it's, he's generally quite a defensive player. Um, and he was he went for it in a big way with um, and deployed out his skirmishers very far in advance of his force. And he got on, basically got um, the jump on me in deployment because without, if you don't know sharp practice rules, if you haven't already got something on the table, you get a, an advantage in deployment. Um, and he got his first three commands out, I think it was, before I put anything on the table. So he was able to come quite a long way down. Um, and um, in the case of the skirmishers, it, he came a bit unstuck because I then put a unit of skirmishers in a building virtually in short range of where his men were and blew one group away and then reloaded and blew another one away. So, <laughs> so um, it was just unfortunate because, as I say, Jono's quite a defensive player and he did actually, you know, I think in hindsight he admits he should have deployed a little bit further back and a little bit more circumspect because there was always a chance that that was going to happen. Um, and uh, he tried to get round the flank with the cavalry and in the end he, he charged my um, line infantry and did, did mess them up, to be fair. Um, but um, we were debating whether it would have been better if he just kept going um, and risk all the shots in the rear. He would have been hit quite hard in the rear, so maybe that would have uh, curtailed them. But anyway, bottom line, it was a fun scenario, but a very difficult one. I think playing it again, if I played that one again and I was playing the attacker, I would probably do quite a few changes to my forces and, and maybe have some movable deployment points and... Uh, various other things but anyway it was it was fun um so we enjoyed that and then um last week um john was away um and uh, alec um housewife's favorite alec um said i don't have a game of line rampant and so i said yeah that'd be great fun and we were originally going to do a three-player game him andy and me um now ironically alec then had to drop out um he had um, he's, well, he's going away on holiday and I think um, something came up which is fair enough real life and all that shit um, so Andy and I were going to play and then um, Spike and um, Ken joined in so it actually turned out to be a four player game and it was a really fun game of Lion Rampant um, quite a large one we had two commands um, or two generals each and uh, I think it was 49 points no 36 points 36 points um, and uh, it was good fun um, really enjoyed it. I'll put the I put the game up. I think it's going out next Friday. So if you're interested, look out for that. I won't spoil it too much. But uh, Andy had his Teutonics, um, and I had my Normans in Sicily, um, and um, he didn't go for many cavalry. He had a lot of very good infantry, um, and it was quite a tactical balancing for a game like Lion Rampant, which is quite a quite a simple rule system and I mean that in the nicest possible way it's, it's you know it's beer and pet beer and pretzels type game um, it was quite tactically interesting because uh, uh, he didn't want to come out and face my cavalry and I then as my cavalry got worn out um, he was quite keen to push forward and I had to dance around some of these big blocks of, of uh, crossbowmen and a spearman um, but it was fun really good fun uh, and nice to have a game with um, uh, brother Ken <laughs> even if he did on two occasions, caused my cavalry to get absolutely hammered. <sighs> anyway, so that was that. Um, not sure when I'm going to get another game. I'm away for a couple. I made this Friday, um, uh, probably after you've seen this video. Um, probably the one after will be back. I'm not sure what we're going to do. I think that we were talking about doing another 15 mil black powder game. Um, I hope so because that was fun. So watch this space. Um, purchase wise, um, hasn't been too bad in terms of uh, expenditure. Um, I bought some um, Peter Pig uh, 15 mils, talked about that I think on the last video or my comparison video. So um, somebody had said Peter Pig fit quite well um, with Epic and I can confirm they do. I'm not planning to do a complete video on this. I'll um, feature it in some of my uh, epic updates um, but you can see here this is uh, these are Carassias uh, what else do I get here 
that's more cuirassiers. There's a trumpeter cavalry, and I got some um, shot with um, what are they called? The stands. Shot with stands. I'm going to use those as commanded shots. So that's the idea with that. So I'm just working through the the. Um, I quite like the infantry. They're really really quite nice. The, I've enjoyed. I'm working through. I think the first couple of packs of uh, musketeers. And they've come out pretty well, so um, you'll see them in a future update probably, um, or on the PCP uh, if I get them finished before um, next week's show. Um, Karassi is not so keen on, they're, they're a bit blobby, if I'm Mr. Blobby, um, which is a bit of a shame, but yeah, I'll mix them in, they'll be fine. But at the moment, still Fist Karassi is definitely the world cavalry, generally, are definitely the way to go. Uh, I also picked up, don't know whether you can see this fella, um, I picked up some Tin Soldier. Uh, 15 mils again these are quite small um, and should just about fit in but what I was looking for was some spear uh, sorry some swordsman so in the British list I think it might also be in the Imperial list you can take a unit of oh, I think yeah, up to two units of um, spear uh, sword and shield guys um, they're very pokey by the look of their stats um, so I fancied having a look at those. So these are these are actually Spanish 15 mil from Tin Soldier. Um, bit of criticism, gripe around. They're in a sort of going forward with a shield in front and sort of sword like that. Um, and as a result, all the flash has got all caught up around here and here. And because they're 15 mils, it's quite hard to get in there and clean them up. Um, which is a slight frustration. They look okay, um, you know, they're 15 mils, so what do you expect? The biggest problem I have with them is that they seem to have, again, I don't think you can, don't know whether you can see that, um, very Spanish looking um, shields. And so um, I'm not sure what I'm probably gonna do is just swap them out. Um, I've been going through my bits box of uh, ancient shields and just trying to find some really banal looking plain looking shields that I can put on instead because I think these are very too Spanish in look um, and given I'm not doing Spanish that would uh, be a problem uh, otherwise um, what else I've got some militarium Magnus militarium 15 mil figures but they seem to be taking an ordinate length of time to arrive so they haven't uh, arrived yet so I've, I've ordered some 15 mil from them as well ECWs uh, also, I think there's some Hussars in there from uh, Thirty Year Wars, just to see again this ongoing thing about how do they fit in with the Epic and how how compatible is it all going to look. So um, that's a company that's um, looking for a buyer. Actually, I think the the couple that run that are retiring, and they're looking for someone to sell it to. So I thought, well, I'll get some before they uh, before they do that. But um, very slow on now on purchasing. Um, also, I. I, I periodically buy figures on eBay um, these are um, some Prussian landwehr um, it's a unit of 24 this is obviously the first four uh, really nice actually very pleased with these 24 figures for 40 quid that's not bad really is it um, that's uh, yeah and he's done a very very good job now when they arrived they were quite shiny so all I've done is just matte sprayed them <laughs> and that's toned them down beautifully um, I noticed they even done the lips and the eye eyebrows on this one. Uh, anyway, so nice figures, um, and um, anybody who paints these uh, landwear figures knows that they are a bit tedious. So um, if I can pick a pack up, pick a unit up without having to paint it, then brilliant, and they'll go in my Prussian uh, uh, forces. Also, um, latest uh, bolt action campaign book arrived. This is Italy Tough Gut. Uh, which is, uh, I, again, I mentioned this before, it's been a couple of years since I've played any Bolt Action, um, and I do like Bolt Action as a system, but I, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, and um, sometimes we play it down the club, but it's not really a favourite. So, um, But I do like these books. I think these books are really cool, um, and you can use them for scenarios for all sorts of games um, which is nice um, this just the history of them the history they run through so this is obviously um, the allied invasion uh, up the boot of Italy from Sicily um, and you know Monte Cassino and all that um, 
which is really interesting reading in its own right. Um, as usual, it gives, um, I think, how many scenarios are there in here? Let me just look. Da, 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 da. Ten new scenarios, some of which are linked, which is nice. A lot of new units for British and Commonwealth, US and French. You get at this is where the Allied Italian units come in, and even some more um, Axis Italian units and German Weimar units coming into the game. Um, let's say if you don't like bolt action, it's they're probably not exactly for you. But I like the book as a read, um, and um, also. So I do like playing some bolt action, and I am going to get back to doing some. And also, um, I'm also aware that I was going to do some conflict um, forty seven, and um, I am going to get underway with that once this sort of epic phase is out of my uh, got out of my system. So there you go. That's what I've been up to. Um, been pretty, yeah, pretty good. I think on the whole, fairly restrained on the purchases, uh, and pretty good on the gaming and the painting. So. Um, there you have it. So anyway, hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying self, thank, uh, safe. Thanks for watching. Much appreciated all the support as ever. Let me know in the comments down below what you're working on. Um, and um, I will see you soon. This is Dom, signing out.